Welcome, everybody, to the Wrestling Informer Show. It is show number five. I'm Cab Manning. I am from the Lingus Mafia podcast. All of my stuff is at Lingus Mafia, where I do some wrestling review shows, and you have a chance to win a lot of stuff if you go over there. So just go to at Lingus Mafia. On my Twitter, you will see the pinned tweet. I got things like autographs from Bret Hart to The Rock to to Austin, a pair of Hitman trunks signed, and Billy's absolute favorite, a WWF turnbuckle, amongst many, many other things. So just go there, the pin tweet, you'll see a lot of nonsense. Let's get to the show. Your number one source for Wrestling Insiders News, that's Mr. Billy Body, and you can find him at Billy K100, B-I-L-L-I-K100 on Twitter. What is happening, Mr. Billy Body? Yeah, so um, just very quickly, um, Joe said to me this week, who um, is in charge of this channel, uh, how are you doing with the, with the plugs? Are you getting any more like members over to your betting site? And I was like, dude, I hardly plug it. Like some yeah. of the people that watch this channel are such whiny b when we even talk about 10, 15 minutes extra of, of wrestling that isn't news because they want me to sit here with a sheet reading it out. Report because, the news, Walter Cronkite, and get the yeah, hell off my TV. Because that's amazing content by the way the swearing let's stuff. see the swearing for your poor guy who's has to edit this let's see if we can make it through i know you just dropped an f right now but i feel yeah. bad for the guy so listen i i got no sympathy for Hughesy either because he won't block <laughs> he won't block some of these idiots because he says that um just just let them he goes the more people that talk the better it is but as long me, as they I, get your name right who gives a shit? yeah i'd love to see some of these uh losers <laughs> blocked but uh but yeah so so joe said to me um how's how's it, are you seeing like a big number of people coming over and i said i haven't really talked about it at all so i run a website lockbetting.com um for over eight years i haven't had a single losing month in sports betting and you can sit there and go oh yeah yeah so yeah it's not possible it is possible yeah spreadsheets from everything I, recorded yep yeah, i have spreadsheets for all eight years and five months i have clients on there i use patreon where you can make comments down the bottom of every single post so had there been, we, we know how people are. I know wrestling fans are nerdy, but you do get nerds in, in, in sports betting as well, especially when it comes to investing their own money. And if they saw one shred of evidence that there wasn't a bet there that was legit or there was any kind of fake price or or bets missing or, or anything that tweaked the, the, pro, the profits and losses in my favor, they would pick up on it immediately. That doesn't happen. Um, I'm legitimately just very very good at sports betting and i've made people money for 101 months uh, if you go to my other twitter account my gambling twitter account which is at sgp soccer that's at sgp soccer which stands for sports gambling podcast soccer which is the other podcast i work on all of this stuff pays me a lot more than wrestling i don't need to be here um, although you can bet on wrestling depending where you live because i'm in california i don't get to bet on wrestling which kills me because that's the one thing you'd want to bet on because we'll know for sure. And uh, Billy's able to in England. So God knows if you're in England too, uh, that's in his sports betting packages. And there's there's a, a limit where they let you bet to because, you know, everything is always predetermined. So you can't go crazy and be, bet a million dollars on something. Yeah. So so that's, that's, the, that's my main source of income. That's the main thing that I do. That's why I spend... 95% of my work week doing, which is researching betting lines, opportunities for, for us to bet on and for my clients to make money. So that's lockbetting.com. Uh, as I was saying, the pin tweet at SGP Soccer is the uh, is the spreadsheet from the previous month, and that will be updated at the end of this month and be replaced by the October spreadsheet. That at the moment, it's a good one to look at because it's September. That was my 100th month of profit. We made 4, 000, over £4,100, which is good for over five and a half thousand dollars So in a single month, I made people over five and a half thousand dollars with my sports bets. So lockbetting.com is the place to go. And as I said, don't want to bang you over the head with it, but that's the main thing that I do. When 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 guys come on here and they say, Oh, you want to be this guy, you want to be that guy, dude. I don't think that any of them are making one tenth of what I make. I don't I don't do this for the money. I do this for the fun that I have trolling these so-called journalists. And and you guys should be on my side because I'm here exposing these journalists i'm here laughing at the snowflakes and i'm here batting for you for a better product i am i'm a rep representation of a cooler better product and i'm a representation of real news and i didn't get here by accident 
I didn't fall off a tree and land at Conan's house. And he said, hey, you want a job doing something for me? No, Conan didn't even want me on here originally on his show. He wasn't sold on me at all. His, his attitude was very clear. I don't like talking to people about wrestling that aren't in the business. But within the time that I continue to go and keep it 100, he eventually decided that I like this guy. Not only do I like this guy, not only is this guy coming through with, with, with news that comes to fruition, but I want to give him a job on the show. So this, this show that you're watching was an existing show on Vince Russo's brand. Now, Vince Russo isn't a very good person to work for. So therefore, I took the opportunity to go and work elsewhere. And that's how we've ended up here. And um, in my background is five or six years now, coming up to six years of accurate stories above Meltzer, above Saturn, around, uh, above Sean Ross Sapp, above Mike Johnson, whoever you want to mention, I have nailed every major story in, in wrestling. And one of the things that people were going on about last week was this Karrion Cross situation. And um, people saying, that, oh, Karrion Cross and Adam Cole have come out and denied what you said. They had a f argument backstage. They were asked about it by dirt sheets. What do you think they're going to say? Oh, yeah, like we had a big row. And like, are they going to tell you that? Did the sports teams tell you about bust-ups between players? Like, this just doesn't happen. I don't understand how stupid you have to be to think that because somebody made a denial of something, that that makes it true. Um, but yeah, God I mean, knows Kevin, there's plenty of famous people that deny left and right and then uh, get caught up in uh, things get exposed. But th this, this, is, this is the difference. And I don't say this in a way to be, to be boastful or, or, to, or to shove it up. I'm saying this because use your common sense. I'm sitting here. I already, I already work for the Sports Gamble podcast. I already have a... A, a, a Patreon service that makes me a lot of money. I don't need to be involved in professional wrestling at all, but I still do it because I have access to this information and I enjoy um, giving it out at the expense of the, the other guys that are lying about having this information. That's it. I, I don't need to do it. Like I'm sitting here in, in a million pound apartment, which is completely paid for. Behind me is, is a 3,000 pound TV, a, a two and a half thousand pound signed photo of Muhammad Ali, a 2,000 pound couch, um, a two thousand pound WrestleFest machine in the corner, just in this room. Like this, this isn't the kind of shit that you have if you're poor and you're desperate to be to become something in the wrestling business and be taken seriously. I don't give a. F I don't give a teeny tiny f if I work here, if I work on Russo's show, I'll go back to my podcast and continue to give the news to the people that know that I have been number one with the news for the last six years. People like Cav who have sat there and work with me for, for this whole time and know what I'm saying is, is absolutely true without a single lie. Correct or not correct? Correct. Correct. No. <laughs> Since it is a wrestling show and all. Uh, it, it is funny that, you know, so many people... The, the thing is, as they it's say... Like, it's like, it's funny because where did I come from? Where did I magically appear from? Why am I here? But did people know that no... you know certain people as well. Like... It's documented people that you know that are in the business. So if someone you possibly know is standing in a hallway and sees something, tells you those people deny it's so. So Clinton denied getting a too. I mean, come on. You're going to get in a fight. You're not going to tell the report. Yeah. Yeah. That ha I mean, and let, there's certain people that did not give a and they would say, but. There are some that are going to keep their mouths shut and, you know, well, it's bad for business. I don't need to get in trouble backstage and all that kind of stuff. So, of course. But you you also reported originally that they were high on Woods and Woods was supposed to win. And then there was a little fluctuation because WWE started freaking out about his numbers. So he had to go, well, I don't use this all the time. So my numbers, I, I go to up, up, down, down. This isn't my thing. So there was wavering by WWE. And as we know, things, they go up until the last second before sometimes they change. So then it's you getting attacked for, no, you said that now they were off of him um, somewhat. And it's like, oh my God, you have to, I don't know if you need to tattoo things in permanent ink that says this happens and then it could never ever budge at all. This isn't the old days of the but 80s. This is the thing that annoys me, right? I came on, I was the person when the tournament started that said Xavier Woods is supposed to be winning this. Okay. 
when I, I said this is this is designed for for Woods. I gave you all that information about Xavier Woods in the beginning. Then I said they're backtracking on it. They feel like Finn Balor may be the way to go. Finn Balor needs the push. And then I was the person that said they've gone back to Woods because the the main objective here is to build opponents for Roman, and they feel that it will be beneficial to have Xavier Woods there with this win. Then you have the likes of Woods, uh, a Kofi Kingston, a Jeff Hardy, who I'm pretty sure is, is definitely going to get a match with Roman at some point. You have all of or Drew McIntyre as well. You have all of these people there that can face him. So it, it's more important, I think, to for, for them to have that there for Roman. I, that was the last thing I said. You have to go by the last thing people say. In between that, you can say anything because this company do anything because they're, they're changing stuff constantly, even during the show. I mean, this week... Wrestle votes put out the, what looked like the most predictable story in the world just because he desperately hadn't tweeted for, for, for a week or so. And he put, tonight, I'm hearing from sources, tonight's supposed to be the crowning of Bron Breaker. And uh, he ends up losing clean to Champa. Like the guy looks like the biggest idiot in the world. So anything that he's got right before, do you immediately disregard that? Or do you turn around um, and say, oh, right, maybe something changed here at the last minute? I don't know. I don't know how stupid these people are. I guess that um, they'll they'll di completely disregard it. The thing is with Wrestle Votes, if I think I know who Wrestle Votes is, uh, if you go to WrestleVotes.com, Wrestle Votes is owned by me. So I think Wrestle Votes is somebody who used to work for me, a kid that used to work for me from England, who goes, who opens a Twitter, who's opened a Twitter account and steals stories from my Patreon. If you don't believe me. Go to WrestleVotes.com and see where it links to. The idea, the reason why I bought WrestleVotes.com is because Cav does a voting competition uh, called Miss Lingus with the women. And my original idea with my colleague Nick at the time to buy the name WrestleVotes.com was to have voting competitions on the uh, hottest woman, hottest woman of the, of the, of the Attitude Era, um, best Intercontinental Champion of all time, best match, best SummerSlam match, basically all of these lists. It was going to be a list site. That's why I bought the domain. And this idiot opened up uh, at WrestleVotes as a Twitter account. He can't get a website because I own it. 90% uh, sure it's one of my former employees. And 90% everything there is stolen from the DirtySheets.com first. So there's a bit of background on WrestleVotes, who you guys see as a really credible source when it's just a kid from England stealing from my Patreon. That's, that's how stupid some of you wrestling fans are. But um, but yeah, so what I want to do quickly before we move on to this current news is I just want to go back and so we've, we've addressed the Woods situation. Um, yes, um, you're welcome. I told you Zelina Vega was winning the winning the Queen of the Ring. Uh, you're welcome that I told you why it wasn't called the Queen of the Ring. You're welcome that I told you that there was going to be no title changes. Uh, you're welcome for the fact that I told you there was going to be a screwy finish and that they were going to go back to Brock and Roman. And uh, you can thank me again when I tell you why they're doing Rock, Brock and Roman and what the situation was with The Rock. And that's going to be the main story at the show. But first, let me read you this previous story. Now, most what's most important here is the date. The 7th of July, 2021, 10.40 a.m. This was before Karrion Cross had lost the NXT title. This is before Karrion Cross was being presented in a weird way on main event. And this is definitely before Karrion Cross moved to Monday Night Raw and lost to Jeff Hardy. This is before all of that. This is why this is a good story. This is why this is a correct story. This is why this is one of the best stories in the year, if you're one of these other jack-offs that do this, but not if you're the guy that told people in December that Daniel Bryan was going to be in the main event at WrestleMania. And that was me. That was me, and I was the only person saying that. And, and, and this story is, is not even in my top five for the year because I've given you guys the Royal Rumble winners, the WrestleMania results, the WrestleMania matches, uh, and the Money in a Bank winners, pretty much everything throughout the entire year. So, uh, and Cav, you you remember the the betting odds on that as well, where we took uh, Nikki Ash uh, to win the Money in yeah. the Bank when uh, Liv was the favorite. Yeah, Liv, Liv and was I was like, you're out of your mind. I said, yeah. even though, and I go, I, I I don't, I will not believe it until I see it because it was too, it was too insane. <laughs> That's yeah. happened quite a few times where I'm like, it's impossible. It's not going to happen. You're going to be wrong on this. I don't care what you say. Well, well, like like Jinder, <laughs> like, Jinder, like Jinder winning the WWF belt. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good um, luck. All right, so let's get on with the show because before people cry, um, this <laughs> this is said to be there is there is said to be some major heat on the NXT champion Karen Cross right now. However, 
the WWE are finding unique ways to punish him rather than putting losses on a future asset whose current undefeated record, I mean, that tells you when this was written, undefeated record is central to his gimmick and success. The issues came to the forefront when Cross called Adam Cole Little Man during their interaction several weeks back. Cole then proceeded to respond by burying the entire Cross gimmick, stating that he was nothing without the company behind him, the girl, and the entrance. Mm. As NXT used bullet point promos over full scripting. Now, what do I have to explain that? No, they know what a bullet point promo, I would hope. Uh, and if they don't, they could look it up. Yeah. Uh, none of this was discussed before, and the end result saw Cross going off on Cole backstage. Now, people are going to take this as he tried to knock his head off. He didn't. He, mm-hmm. he, had, he had a word, as we say in, in, in the UK. Um, since then, we've seen Cross sent to WWE main event along with Bronson Reed. Many reports on these trials and the fact that the WWE are looking to push both up on the main roster. However, that sorry, there are many reports on these trials. Um, however, people also noticed that Cross was working the show without his regular entrance and without his valet and real-life girlfriend, Scarlett. This has been by design as a way to show Cross that there was some validity to Cole's comments and that the company had full control over his push and that backstage bust-ups will not be tolerated. There seems to be, by the way, he hasn't lost to Jeff Hardy yet. So this is looking like a pretty good story. Um, Oh, Cal will come back in a second. There seems to be, he's heard it anyway. There seems to be some general long-term heat on Cross, which centers around Scarlet Bordeaux. Let me let him back in. Uh, according to our sources, a lot of males on the NXT roster have crossed paths with uh, Scarlet in other organizations. <laughs> with speculation suggesting that some got to know her very personally on the independent circuit. And I put in brackets, <laughs> Seth Rollins is one heavily mentioned name. There, I never see, I never knew that Rollins was there. I know he was with that tattooed chick. It was all tatted out and then him getting busted and all that kind of stuff. Didn't know uh, Scarlet. That's a good. uh, Well, he was on the independence for ages before that. Mm -hmm. Um, Or or, or just, yeah, I mean, I don't know how old she is. That that would be good, worth looking up. Um, This is certainly something that seems to bother Cross, who is said to be very protective of his girlfriend, especially as, as he is seemingly unaware of exactly how well certain wrestlers know his current girlfriend. I put a joke in brackets here, but I don't even want to read it because people take it too seriously. Uh, The atmosphere around other wrestlers and Cross is described as frosty rather than confrontational. This is another word I don't think people mean. Frosty's kind of like short, you know, to the point, like Mm -hmm. not not very conversational. But also, she's twenty nine, twenty nine, and she's from Chicago. How about that? Yeah, so I don't think her and Rollins would have crossed paths in the indies. I think he would have just known her from being in the indies while he's doing his. So he would have been like, hey, you want to, I'm in the WWE. You want to go out to get some food? <laughs> you know. <laughs> My code word for, okay. That's the way I used like Big Brother for years. Hey, I was in Big Brother. want to get some food. <laughs> or, or to go back to my hotel. Um, we, are, we are continuing to see wrestlers take digs at Cross on screen, such as Johnny Gargano referring to Cross as untalented. Jeez. There is no doubt that upper management are encouraging these comments to test Cross. The WWE currently have big plans for the character. However, Vince McMahon is said to be reluctant to strap the rocket to a 35-year-old with a questionable attitude. How do you question someone's attitude? You take away stuff that that, that makes that, that adds to their presentation and you, and you make him lose to Jeff Hardy and you see what he does. This is a this is a 100% nailed on correct story. Anybody that's in here saying that there's any way this isn't, I don't care what Disco says. I don't care what Conan says. I don't care what your mom says, dad says. I don't care what Meltzer says. I don't give a shit what anybody says because weeks after this story, this guy lost to Jeff Hardy. That's it. That's all I needed to see. So bye-bye. That's the end of that. I'm never going to talk about that again. It's unbelievable. We'll get to our regular stories. Uh, One of the big ones that has been going around, and I think this is like the main thing that everybody's talking about. You get tweets about it. People want news before you do this show. And it is speculation about Charlotte. Yeah, I worked my ass off on this this week. Um, So I got a lot here. You may be sitting there for a while. Just Good. I want to hear the story because, like I said, I don't go look up anything. Uh, You're my source for news. 
All right. So the Charlotte issue is 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 basically that um, she went off backstage. Everybody knows that. Um, I'm actually not going to question the validity of any of the reports. I can I can say the guys that put that out um, are correct, and that has been echoed by everyone that I've asked about it. Um, so some of the heat comes from the fact that Molly Holly and Adam Pierce were given the job of producing this segment. And it's been said that Charlotte was particularly disrespectful and basically a dick towards Molly Holly throughout the day. And it's not the first time she's been a dick to her. And Molly Holly is this very popular person who's been given a very difficult job, which is to make women's matches that are not main event matches much shorter because they lose ratings. That's a, f- that's a rough job. Um, so the feeling is basically with her is that Charlotte's got on the wrong side of many people in the last six months. And people actually think that she's trying to get released. Um, if you go back to May 2020, um, she was appearing on Raw and NXT. She was seen as a person who was very, very important and very thankful. She was saving the division. And she actually enjoyed it. She said that she was thriving on it from taking the baton from Becky, who had gone off TV to have a baby. Um, and... Um, had just been given the the biggest contract in the company, which was which was bigger than Charlotte's uh, or equal to Charlotte's at the time. She now has a bigger contract than her. So th- this is the thing. I think she wants to get released. I think she wants to go over to AEW. I think she wants to be with the dad, who will probably end up there once the smoke clears. Uh, she wants to be with her boyfriend Andrade, and um, she's just done with his company. Nobody likes her, and that is a real genuine thing. And it's all come around in the last. Uh, a few months or so. And I think some of the stuff she says on TV, it's a lot like her character has morphed into the real person where she does believe that, that she's the queen and, or that she's, that she's owed something. And I almost feel obviously there was going to be a queen of the ring and it wouldn't have made sense for her to win it. But the way that some of the, the lingo that I've heard in terms of there's only one official queen in the WWE to me, that seems like a dig. To me, that seems like people are trying to now get under her skin and she's not very popular. And that directive is coming from higher up. Just listen to when Zelina's on screen and you'll hear things like that where they're saying there's only one official queen. Now, bearing in mind, this isn't going to, this isn't a storyline. This isn't going to lead to a match. One person is on Raw and the other person is on SmackDown. This is simply trolling uh, to of a person that is no longer liked backstage. Now, here is how some of the issues came about. I'll just move my, my chair forward. Um, th- these horsewomen, these horsewomen relationships, we're talking about Bailey, Becky, Charlotte, and Sasha Banks, um, obviously came into the company as, as best of friends and were over on NXT. There is some friction now between certain people in this group. I think Bailey is the one consistent that hasn't caused any friction. And that's probably because Bailey came in slightly later, she came in on a different contract. She's only had one justifiable pay upgrade and it isn't as high as Charlotte or Sasha or Becky. So she isn't ruffling any feathers here. She's got nice, steady um, increases in her income when her contract renewals have come up and she's got a long-term deal with a company and she's friends with everybody. So she isn't the issue. Now, I'm going to go through the rest of these deals as only I can because nobody knows anything else. Um, Becky, for me, is the smartest and highest paid woman in wrestling for a reason. And um, this is because she's the biggest star in terms of merchandising sales, in terms of rating numbers moving when she's on, in terms of social media metrics, and in terms of the outside interest she attracts from the mainstream media and sponsors. That's that, that's a fact. Um, prior to the horsewomen coming in in 2015, Paige was the highest paid woman at £500,000 per year. Ridiculously, Payek Page got a pay rise in 2019 with a four-year deal to 2023. She ended up getting 750 grand, like to, to sit at home and do nothing. So to me, that that's very, very strange because it's she's getting she gets the same downside as Bailey, who's also injured at the moment. Um, Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky Lynch all came in from NXT at $250,000 per year. Charlotte understandably made the most that year due to the fact that she was the Divas champion. She beat Nikki Bella for the title. Now, here is the issues that begin here now with with, uh, politics and in terms of me and other people, my sources, being able to track the contracts. They become a little bit muddier here. Uh, I know all about Becky. Sasha and Charlotte is a bit of a mess, especially Charlotte. Um, Charlotte and Sasha both main evented 
in the 2016 Hell in a Cell. As a result of that, it's culminate the fact they'd been there for a year and because they were really pushing forward with the women's revolution, which got wrong my eyes, um, uh, they got new deals that were not those, um, that were that were bigger than those 250 grand deals that they got. Um, Charlotte Go got more than Sasha. This was the first issue. Charlotte, I believe, got somewhere in the range between six hundred and $700,000, whereas Sasha was paid just slightly less, around about half a million dollars per year. Um, these are difficult to work out because um, there's there's a lot of add-ons to this in terms of merchandising and um, and house show spots and, and things like that. Um, so Sasha got Sasha got less than Charlotte despite being in the same match, but it's understandable because Charlotte had carried the division more so for for a year. I think it's understandable. I'm not Sasha Banks. In 2018, Charlotte then got a new deal. Right, this made her the first woman to get $1 million guaranteed. The first woman in history in 2018. This, I believe, is a five-year deal. And I believe it would have been around about WrestleMania time. I think it expires on April the 1st, um, 2023. Now, this is the issue with this, with this deal. Um, there have been renegotiations to this deal. Uh, obviously, during the pandemic, all, all, all contracts have been renegotiated. Now, I don't know if during the renegotiations, if more years were added to it as per Becky's contract or whether she's still within the five years and just got a little bit more money. Now, here's the Sasha contract for you. Sasha went on a hiatus after WrestleMania 35 and only returned after her contract was renegotiated for more money with more time off. So she signed a new deal in the summer of 2019. Hers is four years. That's a rare deal because everybody signs for three or five, but she got four. Um, which I assume is um, something similar to a three-year deal where, where she's going to work the same number of dates as a, as a three-year deal. Um, so that's why she isn't at the million pound mark with that, with this deal. She's, she's at 750 grand, but obviously she's getting that over four years uh, with a lot more time off. And we, we do see her take a lot of time off. Now, Becky is the one who is the smartest of the bunch and the most valuable. Check this out. Becky Lynch was um, was on that same 250K deal for, for about, for, uh, sorry, for about three and a half years, up until the start of 2019 when they were going to push her. Obviously, she's going to be in the main event of WrestleMania. This is the point where WWE want to negotiate the new deal. What Becky does is she just says, I just want, I don't want any extra time on this yet. Because I am thinking about starting a family, etc., and um, and I and I am um, I am due a break from this as well. Um, obviously, a very odd thing to say when you're in the midst of a, of a push, but it was all coming from someone that she hired to negotiate her deal. Now, she used a broker to broker this extent, this this increase of pay. So let me get let me explain this in a much simpler way because it might get complicated for people. She had a deal from 2015 to 2020, right? Do you follow that so far? Yeah. In 2019, they wanted to give her a, no, a new deal. She said, what I want is I want the same terms as when this deal initially. All I want is I still want my deal to expire in 2020. I still want my deal to expire in 2020. But I want the money that I think I'm, I'm worth for this spot now. So if you could just give me 18 months from this point, at the price, at, the, at, a, at a figure that's fair, that's what I would prefer to do and renegotiate in a year with plenty of time left to for on the deal, still six months to go. I would like to see where I'm at in a year's time. And she used a guy called Bill Berenes, B-E-H-R-E-N-S, to advise her on that and renegotiate the deal. This wasn't about a break. This wasn't about burnout. This wasn't even about children. This was about a relationship that Becky Lynch had with The Rock. And The Rock had put her on to William Morris Endeavor Agency, who signed Becky Lynch pretty much immediately after this. And William Morris, and if you don't know who William Morris are, you guys need to look it up. William Morris, uh, who who also... So, the, so departments of William Morris managed The Rock, but The Rock managed some of The Rock's projects. 
but uh, he's independently managed by I think her name's Danny Garcia, his his ex wife. Mm-hmm. So he's now independently managed by her, but but she also would have been um, would have been a partner in William Morris. So William Morris have now because of the Rock signed up Becky Lynch, and she knew that that was coming, which is why she didn't really negotiate a, a new five year deal when she came back to the table at the start of 2020. William Morris negotiated her deal for a big fat $1.5 million guaranteed the highest paid woman in the history of WWE. And she has a big merchandising percentage. Um, she has house show revenue. She has uh, WWE. Um, she has um, first class travel. She has WWE paying for someone to take care of a kid. A kid comes on the road. Seth Rollins is the, uh, is the woman in this relationship. Like <laughs> no doubt about it. Like she has negotiated everything so that those two are completely set up to travel in luxury. I'm talking about care for the baby. I'm talking about like where, like travel like to however they want, rooms wherever they want it. Like they are proper looked after. And it's all been done by William Morris Endeavor, who is the new agent of Becky Lynch, which is why she stalled on jumping on a five-year deal when um, advised by Bill Berens. Ber- I may be butchering that name, but it's just the information I have. Uh, Bill Berens. And um, instead, waited, uh, got the, got her extra money, and waited to negotiate a fresh deal when William Morris were doing the negotiations, and that was set up by The Rock. So that is that is that is smart to me. That is the, above and beyond the other women. So is she getting the one point five guaranteed each of those years? Is that yeah. the the low? Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's she. And you know what's funny is I always think with the the Rock is since. Vince was so good to him, let him have the name, all that kind of stuff. He he does these kind of things behind the scene that almost screw uh, Vince. I, I don't think it screws – I don't think it's, that was the mindset of it, but I think, like, there was this genuine belief that she can go to Hollywood and do something. Uh, there was interest in her, like, from, from Marvel. Uh, there was something that they, she was going to do uh, pre-pandemic, and it, and, it, and it went away. But, yeah, there's, there's, there's loads of interest from commercials and sponsors. She's – so much bigger than Charlotte in terms of um, interest in, 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 in doing stuff with her. Maybe this, maybe we're seeing why this week. Um, I don't know what Charlotte's like to deal with on a corporate level when you're a sponsor or you're a media person or, or when you're a charity, but I don't know. I, I don't want to make up, shit, but I imagine, you know, there, there's got to be a reason why she gets a, a tour bus and a, and, and five-star travel and five-star accommodation and um they, they're paying for a carer to i mean this kid is coming on tour everywhere they're fine with it as long as mm. becky's there she, she can do whatever she wants do you know what the main problem with that uh promo or what started this problem with charlotte in the back with everybody because when you watch it it looks like the belt first of all gets knocked out of her hands like she tries to pull it away and someone kind of and she gets kind of grabbed so it's like Ah, uh, now I look like a moron because it's dropped and she's told to pick it up. And so, you know, out of character, then you got to do what you got to do and pick it up. But it just seemed more like it was an accidental drop. Like she didn't throw it on the floor, but then it's Becky chucking the belt at her, which looked like she was legitimately just pissy. And like this, is, you know, I've had it with you and this is what caused some stuff. So I'm like, well, is this Charlotte really starting something that i mean why why is there a screaming match in the first place what causes this to happen because throughout the day charlotte told molly holly and adam pierce and and bruce pritchard was to exchange belts and how she didn't want to do it and And she she was was, right and she was telling him as early as and so this 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 is what hasn't been reported this didn't start on friday this started on monday Charlotte was Charlotte was giving Bruce Pritchard hell on Monday and saying that just l- let me just lose to Bianca, and this is there was heat between um, um, Becky and Charlotte already, and it got even worse when Charlotte, who's not in a position to do this, said, "I want to lose to Bianca. She should lose to Sasha on in in Saudi, and then all and that's how the and the belt should stay where they are." So she's now playing Booker on Monday. She's telling the company where all the titles should go. I mean, I I agree with not doing that handover thing because we went through 
something's got to happen. They're they're not going to do this. Otherwise, they would have done this earlier. There would have been a, a title swap by pin or something like this. And all that build up, and then it's let's hand the belts to each other again. I, I hate it. I I still feel um the unification thing that I spoke about was was had to be talked about. It was way too mentioned here where Becky was going, How about I be Becky two belts and and and, and whatnot? Because I, I still and feel Charlotte even says winner take all, which makes her look almost as the good guy because she's like, Let's have a match, winner take all. And then it's Becky who's like see you later and leaves after Sasha gets there. So I guess, my, uh, you know, Survivor Series, I, I'm, my thought is that it is going to be unified at Survivor Series. That's my thought. I have still, nothing inside. But still, that's what it's got to be. Still after they did the changeover. Yeah. I think, uh, especially now, because now I think they will try to use this real storyline and put it into their storylines. Kind of like with uh, Becky and Naya. After things leak out, you might as well use it because now people are going to be thinking, oh, there's real heat between them. I want to see them fight, and uh, let's see if something ha- – it's the same as uh, when Nia had that match with uh, Charlotte, and they started you know, getting into it live on the show, and everyone was really way into it. So someone wanted to see the match again because you want to see the real-life tension. So my thought is people would want to see this match because they want to see the real life tension and see if real stuff happens during the match. Yeah, I think there's that's that's a way to go, but I also feel that I feel vindicated that there's a lot of weight. It was definitely weight behind my story that they were thinking about doing this, and I, I certainly feel like if anything, this was feelers towards doing it. Um, I, I'm I'm going to find out more about this this week because I understand that. Um, and I don't have enough information about it, but I understand that there was some backlash towards towards the unification of the, of the belts, uh, especially when you have um, uh, Rachel Gonzalez. Uh, what's her name? Rachel Raquel. Gonzalez, Raquel. Raquel, Ra- Raquel Gonzalez and Io Shirai and people like that having to to come to the brand. Uh, Oscar coming back as well on Raw shortly. So so yeah, I mean there, there was some backlash in terms of thinking yeah you're short now but you won't be short for for a while um for long sorry and uh and yeah perhaps it's not the time to do it but so perhaps that's why they've gone in a direction to not do it but i i almost think you could temporarily do it as well like there's there's no reason why becky if becky's seen as a star who's moving numbers there's no reason why she can't be becky two belts and continue on both shows until those people come back because then she can keep defending both of the belts you see it's not, it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be a permanent unification where you get rid of both the belts and make one belt it can be a unification where she's carrying two belts like she did before and defending them separately i would i would lean towards if anything happens it would be that um so yeah that that's the um that's the story um if anybody else has that much information then let me know because um that that's a hell of a lot to to make up <laughs> on the uh <laughs> And so, someone said, like, oh, he's completely wrong about his um, unification story. Like, I very much remember. Do you remember how slowly I spoke when I said that and said they are considering possibly? Do, do you remember that? Or yes. That and, yes. And, and, someone, and someone still put the comment on there on the on YouTube where of, of oh, he's going to be wrong about that story. Well, you got to be like me and never, ever look at a comment. I don't look at comments. I look at seeing how many downloads or whatever watches. That's all I care about. And uh, the one thing I saw this week, because there's always a top line comment where it said uh, they were talking about me saying WWE is terrified of AEW. And I still stand by it. I mean, terrified is a, a big word, but they're well aware of AEW. You wouldn't change any of your programming if you did not care and were not worried. They did an extra half hour and on purpose. We're not having commercials, this and that. It's the same from when WCW was around where they said, no, I don't ever watch their product. I have no idea what they're doing. Years later, we find out there's a TV at Gorilla Position. They're watching Nitro at the same time. So don't tell me they're uh, not worried. When, Quite frankly, they really shouldn't be. They're the big fish, but they're scared because that's just the way this company is. Tell me uh, something about Shane Thorne and tell people who Shane Thorne even is. I knew the name and I was like, I forget who this guy is. Uh, who is this? Because I always think of uh, Kevin Thorne when I hear this name. Remember him? 
Yeah, so we're going to quickly run through this because I need to get onto my main story. Um, sure. So can you uh, skip the one under this? Sure. And we'll go straight. To we'll the go to the main one. right afterwards. Sure. We'll the one, you. the one next week, the one under that will hold for next week. Okay. Uh, Shane Dawn is a guy who's in retribution. Uh, he's an Australian guy, and they're going to be putting a crocodile Dundee gimmick on him. <laughs> the guy with the Jason mask that was swiping at the uh, the mat when somebody disappeared. <laughs> That's what yeah. he's famously known for. So he's going to be Crocodile Dundee now coming out to the ring. Yeah. Um, oh, God. From one hell to another. Yeah, I mean, if if it's goofy like Riddle, it's in, and Vince likes it, if, if Vince McMahon likes Crocodile Dundee, then then this could be, you know, good. Like this Managed, could be- managed by Skinner. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Your main story about Rock and Roman. Okay, so I got a lot more information about this this week. Um, I'm going to try and run through it quickly because um, it, 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 the details make it more complicated than it needs to be. So The Rock told the WWE that he was available for WrestleMania 38. He has a clear schedule for it uh, because he was clear to promote the XFL. You may or may not know the XFL isn't happening in 2022. It's been pushed back to 2023. So The Rock now has two years where he's not going to be working in the spring and wants to be promoting the XFL. So given the choice of the two, you know, we, we said on our podcast, if I, if I was the, or our group chat, if I was the WWE, I would take him as soon as I can, because you never know what's going to happen. Like yeah. with, with him or, or whatever, like, you know, look what happened to uh, Kobe Bryant. So um, why did I say that? <laughs> why did well, that's I say not, that? that is, it's not like you disparaged him. Hey, look what right. happened. You, you don't I know, know what's going to happen in life. It's, it's, Maybe it's Rock this, crashes it's, into something. Who knows? It, it's this audience. I just, you know. Um, so, <laughs> you, you look at comments from morons. Right. Um, so, yeah. So that they decided, okay, but given the two, we'll, we'll take, we'll take, we'll take the, the latter. We'll take Hollywood as we originally planned. Um, this doesn't mean that he'll do nothing on the show. I, I can see The Rock doing a cameo or a bit or whatever, but the match at the moment is scheduled for WrestleMania 39. Now, here is the most interesting part. The exact point when it was scrapped. I know about it, and I'm going to tell you what it is. So the WWE during the draft weekend set up a storyline where the Usos were not drafted to SmackDown on the Friday. They were in the in the in the draw the the raw half of the draw where where they were going to be drawn on Raw. You know how they split the rosters, pool A, pool pool B. So yeah. they were going to be drafted somewhere on Raw. If you remember, they did something very very anticlimactic. If you recall, right at the start of the show, the Usos were drafted to to SmackDown, and Clayman hey, Clayman Heyman was just clutching his chest. And he was relieved. And that was the last <laughs> thing you saw. It was it was nothing. It was a story that they built up on SmackDown that ended up being nothing on Raw. This is because The Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania 38 was scrapped at the weekend. And the plan was, was to do a screwy finish at Crown Jewel and do Brock and Roman, uh, Brock and Roman Reigns again at WrestleMania 38 or... Or at the Royal Rumble. So let me premise that as well. Because at the moment, Brock has a rematch coming up. But Bill Goldberg still has a match coming up with Roman Reigns as well. So Goldberg is now, because that was supposed to be his last one under his contract, right? This uh, last w- week. Okay, so this is getting into more complicated territory. I, 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 I could talk about it now. We should talk about it next week. In a, in a nutshell, um, Saudi, Saudi, Saudi matches are paid off in, independently. Oh, okay. okay. Easy so, enough. So he has and, and, one more. Yeah, they, they paid off. They're, they they pay a lot more, uh, and and the the Saudis pay it. So 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 Roman Reigns has these two matches. I would lean that Lesnar will clearly beat a WrestleMania one. Goldberg and Reigns at WrestleMania does nothing for me, um, unless it's career versus career versus title something they could do maybe. Um, so so the very weekend they did it. So getting back to my point. Do you remember the anticlimactic rule? Oh, a hundred percent. I talked about it like a crazy person. I was like, why would they have done this? There was a whole, yeah, there was a whole thing about this. So the plan was very, very different. The plan was to have the Usos go over to Raw and they were going to be drafted to Raw and they were going to be pissed off at Paul Heyman. They were then going to drag Paul Heyman down to the ring along with Roman Reigns and he was going to be kicked out of the bloodline. They were basically going to execute him they were going to be 
have him. That was going to be the end of Raw. I know that this was the final segment planned for Raw. Brock Lesnar at this point was supposed to be on Raw. He was supposed to make the save. And then, obviously, the intrigue going into the match was going to be Brock has saved Heyman. Brock is back with Heyman, mm -hmm. right? Because he saved Heyman from being destroyed by the bloodline. Yeah. Then you would get the finish where Heyman would show his loyalty to the bloodline at the pay-per-view because he would end up back with, with Roman. So Heyman was going to enter this pay-per-view with Brock because Brock saved him from the beatdown. In addition to that, in addition to that, when before Brock came down to the ring, Sonia Deville and Adam Pierce were going to interrupt the beatdown and say, Don't Uso stop, Uso stop. You don't don't do this, don't do this. You're no longer on Raw. You've been traded. Paul, Paul has organized the trade. Paul has organized the trade. And the trade was going to be Brock Lesnar to Raw and the Usos to SmackDown. So he would have tried, so he would have got himself out of the beating, but then Brock would have come down as the newest person of Raw. This would have allowed Heyman to Heyman to be more 50-50 in the match um, and, and go and go to the event with Brock. It would have allowed um, Brock then to be on Raw after he lost that one and done match with Roman. And that's how everything would have progressed. Now you got that weird finish that didn't make that much sense and you're leading to a second match. So that was what that was. That confusion with what are the Usos going to do? It was supposed to be at the end of Raw. They were supposed to be drafted to Raw. They were going to be pissed off. They were going to drag Heyman down to the ring. Sonya and, Sonya and Pierce were going to stop it. Uh, they were going to say, don't do this. You're back on SmackDown. Paul has traded you for somebody else. But because Paul exposed that he had the power to trade Brock, which would have said that he still owns Brock's contract. Uh, I, I said I wasn't going to make this complicated, but I did. Um, that, that's, how, um, that's how that was going to play out. So I, I've actually literally seen the, the format for that and, and how that was going to be. Yeah, and, and I like that story much better. I even think this the stupid thing on SmackDown the next night with him getting suspended because, as usual, Brock has to leave for a while. So how do you get rid of somebody? And it's always – they've done this. It's like they have no other ideas. It's suspended again. And the fact that they said endangering the WWE universe. What did he do that endangered the audience at all? He, he beat up the, the wrestlers. So I'm like, okay, well, this is this is what they do in the F5s uh, pierce out of his pants. That's fine. So um, let's be uh, done with this, and it is time to go. Um, all my stuff, like I said, at Lingus Mafia. Go see all the stuff you could win at my Patreon. Pin tweet is there for you. Uh, at Billy K100, B-I-L-L-I-K-100, and go to his sports betting package uh, that you can go to. That is at lockbetting.com if you want to get all of that. We will be here next week with another insider for you, another edition of the Wrestling Informer. That'll be number six. So for Mr. Billy Body, I'm Cab Manning. We'll see you next time.